Hello, thanks for joining us on the Odges Burnton One Question series uh, for spring. Uh, my name is Jules McKean. Um, I run the media practice for Odges Burnton Executive Search out of London. And I'm joined today on the One Question by Luke Southern. Thanks for joining us, Luke. Uh, hey, Jules, thanks for having me. Luke is the Chief Executive Officer of DRUM, Omnicom Media Group's award-winning content and entertainment agency that helps ambitious brands create their own cultural signals, things with real value for people that cut through the clutter. Prior to DRUM, Luke held senior marketing positions at Virgin Media, PlayStation Europe and Sony Music, and spent the last 20 years communicating the stories of some of the world's leading entertainment and consumer brands. In addition to leading DRUM, Luke's a member of the OMG, Omnicom Media Group UK board, sharing a broader responsibility for and contributing to the ongoing business growth strategy for one of the largest media holding groups in the UK. He also serves on the IPA Council, which is advertising's governing body, working with peers to ensure that advertising remains a progressive and inclusive industry for all. Luke, you get the great honour today of answering your question for spring. What do you think, if anything, our industry has learned from the pandemic? Um, it would be a short answer if, if I said nothing, wouldn't it? So, um, <laughs> we're clear. I mean, look, so much and uh, we've all learned as individuals, haven't we, so much during this pandemic, many of the things that we thought would come to pass haven't. Um, and, you know, as, as challenging as, as it's been for everybody, both in a professional and, and personal context, actually, I, I'm personally pretty optimistic about how we're going to go forward. Um, uh, both in terms of the the country but the industry as a whole and I, I guess I'd sum it up in three ways and and perhaps we can cover them in order um, but I think first of all we've we've learned as an industry to talk to um, and possibly find our audiences in in slightly different places mm. um, the second thing I think is you know clearly and this this is not teaching anyone to suck eggs but we've learned how to work together differently um, a lot of it forced, but a lot of it yeah. reactionary to the challenges we've had. Um, and the third point that if there's time we'll get to is, I really think we, we've, we've learned to channel our creativity um, in slightly different ways, uh, born out of necessity, but also because, you know, we're, we're a resourceful industry um, in whatever part of the industry you work in, whether it's in an agency like mine or you know, you're on the kind of um, uh, media owner side or you're a broadcaster. We've all had to respond and, and pivot. That was the word of choice, wasn't it, last year, yeah. um, to do things differently. So I think, Jules, I, I kind of feel like I feel like we have a slightly more honest relationship with audiences and consumers now yeah. compared to a year ago. And yeah. the reason I say that is because, you know, if you if you go back to the start of the pandemic, um, and what we had to do for our, our clients and brands had to do, there was a lot of obviously virtual virtue signaling, you know, in, in a lot of kind of responsive brand ads, we're with you, we understand the pressures, we're together. Um, but I, I kind of felt for the first time, we we're on the back foot a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, we've, we've, we've historically, we practice the art of persuasion, don't we? And historically we're trying to convince people, be it behavioral change or raise awareness or, or whatever through the work that we do that, you know, you can have something or, or things can be good. and for the first time, certainly in my working career, um, things were happening so rapidly that we were having to, you know, follow that change and mm. adapt in the fly, um, just in the same way the government had to and, and businesses too. And, you know, I think that because of that, um, what, what we hadn't planned for is the way in which audiences were going to consume entertainment, right. the way they were going to you know, be spending time with their peers. We all moved to that kind of remote way of working, but also more and more of our, our audiences for a business like mine that helps brands, you know, connect with with audiences through culture. Suddenly they're in, spending a lot of time in places we couldn't reach. Yeah, yes. the culture's yeah. moved. Yeah. <laughs> got yeah. Smaller and on a device, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and in the SVOD environments, you know, these ad-free environments, um, as well as, you know, the emergence and, and absolute boom and growth of TikTok, you know, and people finding anything potentially uh, that they could use to, to sort of stave off boredom or feel like connected. But, you know, even when we're apart, and that obviously yeah. being a mantra as well. Um, and I think because of that, we, we, we've had to rethink our, our approach to creativity. You know, a lot of the questions we get now, and um, in fact, we've even built a, a sort of studios division off the back of it is from, from brands. 
you know, how do we connect with audiences in this sort of closed content ecosystem? How do we broker or break into Netflix or Amazon or Hulu yeah. or whatever it may be? And how can we be relevant to audiences when, you know, frankly, they love brands still and there's no question about that. You can look at any data and people don't hate brands. They just want them to be more honest and yeah. show the value that they're bringing to the situation. And, and if, if I had to stage it, I'd say it started off about being, you know, a really honest reflection of reality. This is, this is pretty crappy. We're all in this together. But actually, you only have to look at some of the campaigns breaking this week. There, there's a great new campaign for Guinness. I don't know if you've seen it. And um, it's not our work, but I'm a big fan because it's just loads of kind of real life cues yeah. that just trigger that memory, you know, of a pint of the black stuff. Um, yeah. You know, whether it's a cat sat on top of a bin or whatever, just just bringing that sense of hope back to, yeah. hey, we're breaking through this and, and we're doing it together. Isn't that interesting? Because I think you sort of touched on something about kind of really reading the room that I think brands had to really quickly get to grips with, get a balance between realism and reflecting what's currently going on and a little yeah. bit of optimism. And mm. presumably there was also seen to be a bit of a, in the early days of the pandemic, you know, people started to hold on to traditional brands, you know, Heinz baked beans sold out for obvious reasons. And, and there was a sort of, you know, kind of a retrenchment to stuff that felt kind of real and solid and, you know, got us through the war and all of that kind of British stuff. Did you feel that you had to have some of those conversations, as you say, a bit on the hoof with brands about, okay, right, this is, we kind of got to start, you know, again, from looking at what our audiences want and really listening in, in yeah. a different way. Yeah, totally. I mean, look, you know, again, in the first early weeks of the pandemic, and I know that feels like a lifetime ago now, just as a consumer, I'm sitting there and I'm watching TV, you know, it's Thursday night and I see ads running and they've got kind of kids running around the school playgrounds and stuff oh, and yeah. feel immediately out of touch and yeah. like get that off air. I, I wrote a piece actually about, um, that you know, was framed around don't kind of don't rerun your ads, rethink your approach, right? and being staying relevant in this new reality was super important and and that can almost be the mantra you know ad infinitum now just kind of having to sort of keep refine and update your um yeah. your approach but but that dovetailed into how we we had to work like like most mm -hmm. agencies suddenly you know you still got to produce the assets you still got to produce the goods you know you might default like a lot of brands did to animation or yeah. to kind of audio audio seeing obviously a massive boom as a result mm. with that podcast or perhaps this nascent world of, of clubhouse and you know what's that all about what is that which we didn't think they would because suddenly we went commuting and everyone thought oh I wonder what's going to happen to audio but everyone went walking instead yeah exactly exactly and spending time a lot of spending time in your own head as well and mm. actually some of it being quite useful for you to keep keep connected to reality and realize that even when things are a bit crappy you know what you know have some perspective yeah. um and your situation might be, be better than most so I think just working through how do you do how do you do COVID safe shoots? You know, yeah. um, how do you um, uh, help that brand remain relevant to audiences? You know, when when actually it isn't necessarily something that people need. You know, it might not be a Heinz that people are going to kind of stockpile and consume in those early stages. And I think I think Jules actually the the way I'm looking at it now is we're through that stage. But what yeah. does it mean going forward for this new working environment? Yeah. So, you know, you, you may notice my backdrop. I'm, I'm in our office today um, in a COVID safe environment, of course. And, you know, as we, we, we move back to this blended hybrid world, you know, I, I have my own personal concerns about how we're going to help our yeah. workforce readjust to it. And genuine concerns like for, for, for working parents are, I sit on a working parent and carers um, mm. uh, advisory team at, at Omnicom Media Group and just balancing, you know, childcare with this kind of almost structured, flexible working arrangement. Yeah. There, there's a lot of things I think that we're going to find don't work. Um, and it's our responsibility as leaders to help help our teams and our clients as well navigate this new way of some people in the room, some people not in the room, connecting through technology, but technology always being brilliant. Um, but still needing to be productive and most importantly, take care of people's well-being and, and, and mental health. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? I think we're hearing a lot from leaders now coming out of the pandemic, starting to come out of the pandemic, about, <clears throat> excuse me, getting the balance right between 
being able to put arms around in a very personal sense. You know, there's a sort of proximity to leadership, perhaps a very an honesty and a humanity that wasn't there before that perhaps we might not want to throw out. But at the same time, recognizing this commercial environment, we need to get stuff done and getting treading that balance is going to be is going to be really hard, isn't it? Working out what gets set in stone about no, you must be in the office when X, Y, and Z happens versus no, it's up to you entirely free free reign. And actually, I do wonder if there's a sort of personal responsibility for for some of us that sort of slightly older guard to to kind of be coming into the office to help younger generations learn from osmosis in the way that you and I did when we were young. Absolutely. And, you know, the um, you can't underestimate the power of, well, um, the power of experience. Right. And and seeing it, like you said, osmosis, good, good, good work. Maybe maybe diffusion too. a bit of kind of soaking it up. Um, so I, I, I don't have an answer because none of us do, but all I would say is, um, I think we need to be quite agile and probably will need to use that pivot word again, change quite a lot over the next six to 12 months and not say, right, well, this is the approach now it's set in stone because what we've learned in the last 12 months is nothing's certain. And actually it is, it is possible to change. You can change Mm. a whole 25, 30 years or longer way of working overnight out of necessity so why can't we be that agile when we need to for our own people and and i suppose that goes into my third point around yeah and looking for creative opportunities in in different spaces you know i for one um am, am party to this but you know gaming and the world of virtual environments and esports which lots of brands have had a lot of success in and, and obviously it's a multi-billion dollar industry you know significantly larger than a lot of other entertainment sectors I kind of feel that for the first time, a lot of um, um, people in the world of marketing and and media almost have first time experience of something that had been quite invisible to them for a long time because they're in the office. Suddenly they're seeing their children, you know, in between homeschooling, you know, it might be Fortnite, it might be Minecraft, my son's personal favorite, it might be League of Legends, it might be any of these things. What is this world? And actually it's unbelievably engrossing, You, you know, it's huge. And there's a there's a whole ecosystem around it, and that ecosystem, whether it's like Twitch, for example, you know, as a as a new distribution channel and, and route to market, is not just about gaming. Forget those stereotypes. There's as much food, yeah, food and entertainment and and sort of music content on there as there is gaming as well. So I think because of what's happened and the way that people have had to spend time doing other things just to keep themselves sane, you know, that's now opened up a, a plethora of, of yeah. new opportunities to you know do some quite interesting and creative um uh, things regardless yeah. of whether you're on the broadcast side the media side or in the agency world like myself or even, or even music partnerships with Fortnite oh, yeah. and things as well it's, now i couldn't agree more i think there's also uh, you know for, for those of us who've got kids of that age realizing that when they couldn't see their friends actually you know in my case I for the first time ever let them play Fortnite Mm -hmm. and it was because it was you know some semblance of social interaction that they weren't and you know they weren't keen as boys to necessarily sit down and just chat over Zoom and it was a a way of which they could externalize a sort of social environment and and I do think it's very true that those you know people in marketing we tend to have quite curious minds and suddenly you think my goodness some of the trailers that are being produced are like an incredible piece of sort of a manga movie and this is suddenly the talent and we obviously have a big global gaming group um, of executive search so uh, at Dodgers and some of the roles that we're placing around the world are, are are just staggering in how hybrid they are the crossover and the partnerships and the creativity and the narratives that they're building in the games it is you know merging so much as you say with it is essentially content and it's your, it's just interactive content. You're walking through a movie instead of watching it. And what does that implication is that going to have for movie makers? It, it, I quite agree that there's, we haven't even scratched the surface of this yet. Yeah. And, and, and I guess that goes for, you know, a whole broader spectrum of things that have arrived, maybe not because of the pandemic, but have definitely been um, accelerated or, or, or may, you know, fallen into the mainstream more things like non-fungible tokens yeah I mean, who knows where that's going to go but that is that revolutionizing the world of art or is it is it kind of a way to make a quick buck in the emperor's new clothes i'm not sure but you know the fact that it's happening and that that 
that actually creative people out there and creative minded people, you know, are using blockchain technology to mm. enable, you know, a, a kind of rubber stamp seal of approval on, on a first first print version of a piece of digital art, I think is quite interesting. And, mm. and it's, it, you know, I think the people that and the brands that will have the success are the ones that don't turn away from it, but embrace the fact that I don't really know that much about it, but I want to learn more and yeah. I want to understand more. Um, you know, same with the world of crypto and the kind of, you know, distributed ledger systems and everything that sits behind yeah. it. The application for that yeah. in all of our industries is actually pretty big. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of it and support of crypto. I've been for, for, for many years, but I just think the underlying technology yeah. um, feels quite robust. And, you know, it yeah. might might scare a few people, but but I think it's worth looking into. So, so yeah, you know, I mean, I think we've learned a lot and there's like anything, there's loads more to learn. Um, but you, you know, whether that's kind of creativity or people or, or, or actually the way that we can help brands continue to have that honest and, and useful relationship with consumers, um, is where I'm, um, and the agency actually spending most of our time. Yeah, no, that, that, I think that's absolutely right. And the hybrid learnings across all of those different areas of entertainment is going to be, is going to be the one to watch. Um, Luke, that was brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us today on the I'll Just Burn Some One Question for media. And um, hope you have a good um, return rentre, return to work in some capacity. Brilliant. Thanks, Jules. Lovely to, lovely to join you. Thanks a lot, Luke. Bye-bye.